Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Miguel Acosta Loza and this is uh, my presentation on Sebastiao de Melo and the Pummelin reforms uh, from a History 102 class. We can get started. Uh, in the middle of the 18th century, the monarchies of the Iberian Peninsula shared the same objectives. So we have Spain on the one hand and Portugal on the other. Both of them wanted to strengthen state power and expand commercially in their territories and in their respective overseas colonies. In Spain, Carlos III embodied the main attempt at reform. In Portugal, the reformer was Sebastião de Carvalho e Melo, Marquis of Pombal. He was born in May 13, 1699 in Lisbon and died on May 8, 1782 in Pombal. He was a Portuguese reformer that virtually ruled the country for more than 22 years. That's from 1750 all the way to 1777. Sebastián was the son of Manuel de Carvalho e Ataide, a former cavalry captain and former nobleman of the royal house. The elder Carvalho died relatively young and Sebastián's mother remarried. Sebastián's uncle, Paulo de Carvalho, was a professor at the University of Coimbra. Um, and he was a person of a lot of political influence. He enrolled his nephew in that institution, but Sebastião abandoned his studies to enlist in the army, in which he reached the humble rank of corporal. Disillusioned with the army, um, he quit and dedicated himself to the study of history and law, and was later admitted at the age of 34 to the Academia Real da Historia Portuguesa, which is uh, a very prestigious uh, history institution uh, in Portugal. In 1733, he married Teresa Maria de Noronha e Almada, a widow niece of the Conde de Arcos. They moved to the village of Saure near Coimbra, where he had property. There, he dedicated himself to his studies and to agriculture. In 1738, he returned to Lisbon. His uncle now recommended him to Joao de Mota, prime minister for King John V, who appointed him Portuguese ambassador to England. His wife, in poor health, however, was unable to accompany him. She died in 1739. His diplomatic career opened wider political horizons for him. He distinguished himself by the zeal with which he conducted several negotiations. And for the seven years he stayed in London, Carvalho carefully studied English, political, social, and economic practices. In 1750, he was appointed by King Joseph I, Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs. Later, for his excellent work, the Marquis de Pombal was promoted to Chief Minister of the Court. From this appointment, a series of reforms began in the Portuguese Empire, known as the Pombalin or Pombal Reforms. The Pombalin Reforms were a series of changes that were introduced to make Portugal um, a both economically and commercially self-sufficient nation by expanding Brazilian territory. In other words, these were changes introduced by the Portuguese empire to resolve the financial imbalances affecting both colonial Brazil and Portugal. The Marquis of Pombal changed the administrative organization of Brazil and the demographic, economic, social, and cultural policies of the entire Portuguese empire. In response to military and diplomatic operations, Pombal decided to promote settlement in the north and west colonial Brazil, the Estado do Maranhão and the captaincy of Mato Grosso. Settlers from the Azores and Madeira Islands were given assistance to populate and labor these regions. New towns, planned according to the 18th century rationality, were created in the hinterland. The Age of Enlightenment made Portugal seem not only small, but also very unprogressive for its time. It was a nation of only 3 million people in 1750. Although the economy of Portugal before the reforms was pretty much stable, it was very dependent upon Brazil for much of its economic support and England for much of its manufacturing support. The earthquake of November 1st, 1755 reduced two thirds of Lisbon to rubble. Carvalho mobilized troops, obtaining supplies uh, and creating shelters and hospitals for people. The day after the catastrophe, he was actually already outlining ideas for reconstruction. 
with architect Eugenio dos Santos, um, old medieval Lisbon was changed into one of the most beautiful European cities. The need to grow in manufacturing sector in Portugal became a priority uh, because of the excessive spending of the Portuguese crown. The 1755 Lisbon earthquake, the expenditures in war uh, with Brazil, uh, with Spain for South American territories and the exhaustion of gold mines and diamond mines in Brazil. His great reforms included the creation of several companies and guilds uh, that regulated every aspect of commercial activity. He created the Duro Wine Company, which demarcated the Duro Wine region for production of port uh, to ensure the quality of the wine. He ruled with a very heavy hand, imposing strict laws upon all classes of Portuguese society, from the high nobility to the poorest working class. These reforms gained him enemies in the upper classes, especially among the high nobility, who saw him as nothing more than a social upstart. The seat of the vice royalty was transferred from Bahia to Rio de Janeiro in 1763. The creation of new administrative bodies, such as the Junta do Comercio in 1755 and the Royal Treasury in 1761 also changed the administration of Brazil. Beginning in 1767, as a result of the new financial institutions created, the local finances of each captaincy were administered by a board of treasury made up of five or six members with the governor as its head. Accountable only to the royal treasury in Lisbon, these local juntas were responsible for collecting and distributing the royal income. Some specialized institutions were also created. We have the boards for the inspection of sugar and tobacco in Bahia, Recife, Rio de Janeiro, and São Luis do Maranhão, and intendants for the Navy and royal warehouses in Bahia, Rio de Janeiro, and Recife. The military reorganization was less successful in Brazil than it had been in Portugal, but some efforts were indeed made to reinforce the southern frontier, and military recruitment became easier when Pombal ordered a census of inhabitants in each captaincy. This way, it became way more difficult for the male population to escape from military enlistment. Other reforms also occurred within the field of education by Pombal, and he uh, decided to expel the Jesuits in 1759, creating the foundations for a secular public primary and secondary schools. He introduced vocational training creating hundreds of new teaching positions. Um, he also created departments of mathematics and natural science at the University of Coimbra. Um, and how did he finance all of these uh, reforms? It was by imposing new taxes. As a consequence of the Pombolin reforms, slavery was abolished in Portugal and instead reinforced in Brazil. Agriculture and trade were encouraged. Although the measures implemented by Spain and Portugal responded to mercantilist ideas and were influenced by the Enlightenment, the economic context was very particular in each empire. In the Brazilian case, trade with Europe was directed by the monarch through a monopoly regime. And after the, re the reforms, it continued to be granted regularly under concessions or leased to private trading companies. It was customary for the sovereign to hand over the administration of colonial commerce to contractors who signed a license, uh, which stipulated the rights and obligations of each one of the parties. In exchange for the concession, the contractors gave a percentage of their profits to the Portuguese crown. Upon the death of King Joseph on February 24, 1777, however, all the Marquis power banished under the new queen Maria I, political prisoners were not only free, but also Pombal was accused of having abused um, all the power that he got from his political positions. He was found guilty by a judicial tribunal that subjected him to severe interrogation from October 1779, all the way to January 1780. Queen Maria then simply banished him from Lisbon and he decided to retire in Pombo, where he died very quietly in 1782. And this has been my presentation. Uh, thank you so much for your attention.
these are um, some of the sources that I use, including Wikipedia, Encyclopedia, Second Wiki, and the Britannica Encyclopedia that's uh, open for everyone. I hope you enjoyed, and if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. Have a good day.